and welcome to my podcast. In this podcast, we will be discussing the, the development of theme throughout Louisa May Alcott's Little Women. Little Women focuses in on the lives of the four March sisters, Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy, during the Civil War in New England. This book shows their struggles and their joys, their sadness and their happiness throughout the days of their lives. One theme that can be identified in this novel throughout the beginning, middle, and end is in letting go of struggles, people can gain from the freedom to learn from their experiences. At the start of Little Women, we are introduced to the March Girls, a small family living a humble lifestyle with not much to give or to have. These young girls are discussing the upcoming holiday of Christmas. Although the conversation starts dismal, the girls soon let go of their dismay and decide to choose to create some joy out of their simple possessions. These girls decide to put together their spending money to present their mother with a gift. This is shown when the second to youngest sister Beth exclaims, I know what we'll do, said Beth. Let's each get her something for Christmas and not get anything for ourselves. In this section of text, the young girls of the March family let go of their poverty, they let go of their anxieties of what is to come, and in doing this, they are able to create this special thing for their mother. These girls begin to learn about what they can create for others, even if they don't have much for themselves. In the core of this novel, Meg, the oldest of the March sisters, has been called upon by a suitor, which she is quite fond of. Meg is too young to accept this suitor, and he is a poor man, but Meg still loves him despite these trials. Meg's aunt doesn't approve of the match and is quite vocal with her opinions. Meg is not happy with the way her aunt, March, is discussing her choices, and she lets go of her need of approval and stands up for her John. We can see this in Meg's thoughts when Alcott writes, Meg hardly knew herself. She felt so brave and independent, so glad to defend John and assert her right to love him. We can see that Meg has broken through a layer of something she has been carrying with her for a very long time, and in doing this, she is learning about herself and her inner confidence. Near the end of the book, an example of theme is seen when Louisa May Alcott writes, Here, cherished like a household saint in its shrine, sat Beth, tranquil and busy as ever, for nothing could change her sweet, unselfish nature. And even while preparing to leave life, she tried to make it happier for those who should remain behind. Near the close of this book, one of the March sisters, Beth, is dying. And although she is aware of her downfall, she soon accepts it and moves on from her grief. Beth accepts her circumstance, and she turns to other things to learn and to grow in her last days of life. Beth no longer has control of what she is facing, so she switches her perspective and goes on with the rest of her life. This can be seen when Alcott writes, The feeble fingers were never idle, and one of her pleasures was to make little things for the school children daily passing to and fro. In this scene, there is evidence of the theme that people can learn from their experiences when they let go of struggles. Beth knows what is going to come of her, and instead of wallowing in her fear or dread, which she knows ha- would have, which she would have every right to do, she lets go of these things and learns more about love and about taking care of others. Throughout the book of Little Women, there can be many themes found and identified. A prevalent theme that presented itself to me was in letting go of struggles. People can gain from the gain the freedom to learn from their experiences. This is one of the many themes that can be found in Louisa May Alcott's novel, Little Women. Little Women by Louisa May Alcott was first published in the year 1968 and 1969. Again, this has been an analysis of theme on the book Little Women by Louisa May Alcott.